tweet with her near 100,000 followers, she divided opinion, to say the least. Founder of Michaela Community School in Wembley and dubbed as Britain's strictest head teacher, Catherine Verbalsing, tweeted that... Uh, uh, well, we've got the whole tweet here. Parents, uh, never has there been a better time for you to teach your kids at home. Don't assume they are being taught well at school. You might get lucky. Great. But don't assume it. Teach them after school. Daily, always. Other parents do. They're just not telling you. Well, Catherine joins us now. Um, good morning to you. Thank you for being with us today. So, well, obviously, this has had quite the reaction, this tweet. And I think sometimes in a tweet, you only get so many words to be able to explain what you really mean. So this is kind of your opportunity to expand on that because you're not suggesting that people go home and get a whiteboard out and sit their children down in front of it as you start doing algebra. No, well, I mean, if you want to do that, you can. But my main concern is simply that sometimes parents sort of tick the box and think, I've sent my child off to school. And they don't really know what, what the child is accessing. And sometimes the child will access some really excellent teaching all of the time. And other times there might be, the teacher might be absent. The teacher might be tired. The, the particular situation at the moment, you might have a deputy head in a gym with 120 children because there aren't enough teachers in at the moment because of the COVID situation. And obviously proper teaching isn't able to take place. And so, and even if everything were perfect, Parents need to realize going to museums, reading with your child, uh, counting the peas on the plate, um, asking your child, what tests do you have this week? Shall I test you? And you take out the textbook and you look through it. Sometimes parents don't feel very confident in doing that. But I tell you, you can learn stuff with your child. Have them teach you. Make the conversation about learning. And that's so important because children will want to copy their parents. They want to, they want to get their respect. And if they see you sort of on your phone all the time, then they'll go on their phone. Whereas if you're reading with them, I always say to parents, try and spend, oh, sorry, those are our pips for lesson changeover. Um, <laughs> um, I always say, try and sit down with them for half an hour if you can. And if you can't do 10 minutes where you take a book, and if your child isn't much of a reader, you read a paragraph out loud, they read a paragraph out loud. And you just swap round like that. Mm. If they're really little, you read to them, finger under the words, and don't just read one book. Read three or four. And when I say three or four, it's because the little books, you know, for toddlers, they, they only take 10 minutes to read. So it, it's, it's about always having that hat on of I'm developing my child, I'm helping to support my child with their learning. It in the in the and all, all of that makes perfect sense. Uh, and as Holly said, you can only get your message across in a certain amount of words uh, uh, in a tweet. And you do the minute you send it any tweet, you throw <laughs> yourself to the wolves. However, in the spirit of that tweet, can parents of children at your school, the Michaela Community School in Wembley, can they assume that their children are being taught well? Well, look, what what everybody needs to remember. I don't want parents to assume that. I want you to always assume that you've got to do lots at home. Because if everything's going really well, well then brilliant, you're lucky. And when I say you're lucky, I don't mean that it's exceptional. I mean that you're lucky because you're getting a free great education and that's brilliant, wonderful. But the fact is, teachers aren't in sometimes. Teachers are tired. Teachers, there's a whole variety of things. Teachers are training. So you've got teachers who are absolutely brand new, never been in a classroom before. It takes years to become a really excellent teacher. I can remember a year nine class that I taught in my first year of teaching. Well, they hardly learned a thing. I can tell you that for nothing. And it's not because I'm a bad person. It was because I was a brand new teacher. And that's just natural in, in schools. You know, and so that's okay. There are going to be mm -hmm. parents watching this that will be thinking, hang on a minute, I, I'm holding down multiple jobs. I'm working very, very hard. I might be a single parent. I might be co-parenting with somebody else. I've got so much on my plate already. I do yeah. rely in the education system to educate my children because there's not an awful lot left when I walk through the door and I've just finished work. In fact, at that time, it's just to have fun and enjoy my children, not to start bringing in education. So what would you say to them? Because it feels like it's just another way to pile on a little bit more guilt onto those parents. Well, it's not about guilt. It's, it's about actually addressing the, the, the idea that you've just said there, fun versus education. 
education is fun. And if you use that as a time for bonding, then you can get to know each other. You can learn stuff together. You sit down and watch a television program, for instance, and you talk about the characters and how they're developing. And Oh, what do you think is going to happen next here? Oh, wow. Do you like the ending? And why did the, what, what kind of ending would you have preferred? Mm. That is learning. If you're a great cook, you teach them how to cook. If you're great at football, you teach them football. There's a sense of you trying to impart knowledge all of the time. And that's from the moment they're born until they're 18. And that isn't about, take, it doesn't take more time. It's just a shift in mindset, as opposed to just thinking that's all for school. The, um, the, the noise we heard earlier, you described them as the, the sort of the, the, the lesson pips. Uh, normally, yeah. other schools take five to 15 minutes to get into the next lesson because of the rowdiness. Uh, you, can, uh, you can do it in, uh, in about a minute and a half. Uh, so, uh, well, you know, that's, that's pretty quick. That's, that's discipline. Um, but people have said, pupils' friends have, d have dubbed your school a prison school. Oh. Um, so what do you say to that? Well, what all our children say is that other people might say that, but they don't get, they don't understand the kind of quality of learning and the amount of time they're getting their lessons. So what you're referring to there is that we have silent corridors and the children move very quickly to their lessons. And it means that there's no wasted time. And when you're trying to catch up children on their chronological reading age, they're 11 years old, but they actually have a chrono chronological reading age of a seven year old, they, they need time in their lessons. And so Notice, what am I talking about with parents? I'm talking about maximizing learning, using every possible minute to develop the children in front of us because there's so much to learn about the world. And so why wouldn't we want to do that? Uh, when you say other schools, I mean, look, some schools will take a few minutes, some schools will take longer, depending on how the school runs things. And that's sort of what I mean, really, when I'm talking to parents. You don't really know what's happening in the school. And the best thing you can do for your child is to develop them at all times in terms of their learning. It, if if you're, you want your child to be good at maths, it's not just about their maths lessons. It's about maybe doing some checkers and some chess and some magic with them. It's about, it's about making maths part of their lives all of the time. Same thing with English. It's not just about being taught how to re write an essay. It's about constant reading. And if you just let your child sit on their phone all the time, then they, 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 their brains are not going to develop in the same way as children who are reading all of the time. Mm. And they're not going to want to read. So one of the worst things you could do is put a, give a toddler a phone and have them on their phone all the time. And you're not supervising that. I don't mind if you want to use some maths apps and you sit with the child and do it with them. But if they're just on their phones all of the time, when it comes to reading, they then find that boring. And it's really hard for a book that's black and white and flat to compete with a phone that has all sorts of explosions and colors and so on. And it's just really me asking parents, think about this stuff, because otherwise I tell you what happens. You get to 16 and your child underperforms at GCSE. And then you think, gosh, what could I have done? Well, I'm trying to ring the alarm bell now and say, come on, parents. I know it's hard mm. and I know lots of us don't have time, but even if you just spend 15 minutes a day and just shift your mindset, so you're thinking more about how do I, I always have that hat on of mm. how am I developing my child? Well, I mean, there is absolutely no question, um, Catherine, that, that, that talking to you, you are passionate about yeah. this and it, it, it does sound incredibly strict and we did say that it's been described as a prison school. However, uh, when asked about the teachers, the pupils have said they are strict because it's uh, it's the fact that they love us. Mm. So, you know, it has a, it has a massive benefit there. That's a good thing to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks have, for your uh, time. have a good day. Thanks, thanks, thanks Thank for talking to us. Thank you. Bye now.